Hello fellow model collectors, my name is Henry Tenby and right here this beautiful model is a 150th cutaway model. It's a KLM DC-8. Uh, the model dates from the early 1960s and it is a metal casting made by Raise Up Models of the Netherlands and I am offering this model for sale so I'm making this video as a video tour of this model so you can have a look at the details of this model and assess if you might like to add this model to your collection. These are expensive. Cutaway models are always expensive pieces. So uh, hopefully with this video, you'll be able to assess uh, the condition in your opinion. And I am welcoming of offers. So if you're interested in the model, of course, you can certainly contact me with your offer and we can see if we can reach a deal. So let's get on with the tour and I hope you will enjoy what you're about to see here. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, it's 150th scale. So I've got a, uh, a, a yardstick here, and uh, the yardstick is exactly uh, 39 inches long. So if I hold the yardstick to that, you can see that the model measures about 35 inches, uh, roughly 35 inches in length. And if we bring the yardstick to the... Uh, to the, uh, it's just the wingspan for a wingspan measurement. You'll see that it's also, it's about, what is that? It's about 34 inches on the, uh, on the wingspan as well. So let's get on with the tour of the model. Uh, the wings do remove for ease of shipment. They easily come out. And I should point out right at the outset, this is the original stand for the model, uh, KLM. A DC-8 jet and there is a hole in the top to bring a wire up. I guess back in the day uh, there were lights in in this model, some form of lighting, and they would plug it into the wall and there would be a wire going up through the stand into the base. And as you can see right here, right there, there is a undercut for a wire. So th it is the original stand. Uh, I'll assess the exterior of the model. I'm going to say the exterior is in pretty good shape. A little bit of yellowing, yellowing obviously. The model date is, dates from about, I'd say 1960, so, or 61. So the model is 60 plus years old. So these models would be typically pretty banged up uh, for this era. Uh, there are some touch-ups. So the model's not without touch-ups, but uh, overall uh, the exterior is in really uh, quite good condition uh, for age, I would say. Uh, again, there are, there are there are some marks, right? So uh, I'm going to point out what I can see. But overall, uh, certainly the fuselage presents very, very nicely. Um, a little bit of chipping on the front there. That's not something I'm going to mess with. So we move around to the uh, starboard side of the aircraft. You can see there's a strike here. But again, overall, when we the model is in really, really, really good condition. Uh, I would actually assess this as a 9 out of 10. Uh, I don't know that a 10 out of 10 would even exist because these models are large, cumbersome, and heavy. And as they were moved about, they would chip. They would strike walls and cabinets, etc. So um, it, it's, it's not very probable unless you have one of these sitting in a box that has never been uh, displayed uh, that you would find one in 100% mint condition. So this one is pretty good, actually. You know, as far as, as, far as these models go, um, you might be hard pressed to find one better than this. Uh, you might wait a lifetime for that. I mean, a, as you can see, there's a few marks there again. If you are so inclined, you can take this model, take you can take this wing section to an auto body shop and they would be able to match that silver exactly and you could uh, touch up the marks. But again, that's something that the purchaser would have to do. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, there are some touch-ups actually on, on the tail here. But again, they're not terrible. They're not jumping out. The deco work is actually really quite good. There has been some touch up on the top here, but again, it does look really, really good for age, in my opinion. Uh, we'll go up close here uh, to the cheat line. 
and you'll see that it is there. Yeah, okay, I just caught it. There is maybe a touch up here, but uh, again, for there's a touch up right there. There are some touch ups, as you can see. Uh, we'll scan the uh, the crown of the fuselage. Touch ups. Strike here. So again, I'm just giving a, a very detailed uh, tour of the model. So you can make your historical touch up right there. You can make your own assessment. But in terms of what it is, I think it is, it's museum grade. It's definitely a museum grade model uh, for the serious collector that's looking for a cutaway. Let's go inside the cabin. Now I should point out this plastic is just a piece of, um, it easily comes off and I'll, I'll, I'll remove it. For the purchaser, uh, the fuselage, uh, the, uh, the interior should be sent separately and it can easily come out. So you will have to take into consideration that this, this, the fuselage, the, uh, the, the, the flooring section should be in its own box. I would not ship it, uh, this floating around inside there, but do recognize that some of these uh, passengers in the seats, uh, it's my understanding from the previous owner that they have been replaced. Which ones, I cannot tell you. Uh, I do not know, but there is some replacement of passengers. Uh, obviously, the rear galley and the forward galley are missing. You would have to uh, fabricate that yourself out of perhaps balsa wood or contact a model maker to have that done. Uh, but that, I would say, is up to the purchaser. I was quite happy with the model just as it is. So, I'm going to remove uh, the clear pair specs here. It just pops out. Um, it just easily comes off. Yeah, just like that. So now I can give you, see, this is just a, a piece of, you can get this at any hobby shop. It just folds into position there. But let's go inside and have a look at the, uh, the cabin. You're probably curious about that. So we're just gonna do a full, oh, there's a, uh, I see we have a purser tending to some passengers. We're, and there's a, we have a flight attendant right there also doing some passenger care moving down the fuselage you can see the exact uh, number of passengers on board so i hope that gives you a very detailed and clear understanding of what it looks like inside this passenger cabin and Again, the model is 60 years old. So for 60 years old, uh, cutaway models are usually very costly because they are hard to find. Number one, in good condition. And number two, uh, you know, with, with the passenger cabin intact. So this is just sitting, I'll just show you, it's just sitting on a, it just floats in here. So I would, this, this, I would ship this, I would remove this, it'll ship in a separate box. It has to, otherwise it's just gonna get banged around. So, and same with this piece of plastic that needs to go um, separately just to protect everything. So, but this is easily replaced uh, from a hobby shop. Not, not a problem on that, but this gives you a very good idea of this model. Hope you've enjoyed the video tour. Uh, KLM DC8, PH DC, DCJ as in DC8 jet. Uh, so this is a not, this is a fictitious registration that KLM uh, and Douglas came up with. I guess they didn't know the actual registrations of the aircraft. This model might even date from the 50s, might date from the late 1950s before the delivery of the very first aircraft. So they just, they went with a DC jet as, as the registration. So I hope you enjoyed this video tour. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And I do look forward to your comments uh, in the comment section of the video. If you're not already a subscriber uh, to the Jetflix TV channel here on YouTube, do hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to discuss the purchase of this model, you can certainly contact me. You can send me an email. My email's now on the screen. And uh, when the model does sell, I'll make note of that uh, in the postings. So thanks for watching the video and I'll look forward to seeing you on my next model video. Thanks again, bye for now. Howdy folks, my name's Henry Tenby. I'm a hardcore collector of travel agent aircraft display models like the beauties you see behind me. And I'd like to tell you about my brand new book. It's called The Aircraft Display Model Collector, Investor, and Appraisal Guide. It's just been published. It's 162 pages of hardcore color. 
featuring everything you need to know about investing, buying, and selling of these fabulous models. So as you can see right here, all the manufacturers are covered in this book. All the main manufacturers that produce models, the travel agent models for airline industries and, of course, the manufacturers uh, from the 1940s pretty much to the 1980s. Uh, we go over all the manufacturers with their production lines, their scales, their models, which models I recommend and which models you should actually avoid for your collection. There's a lot of tips here that you're going to need to focus in on if you're going to get down and serious on collecting travel agent models because there's a lot of great models, but there's also some models that you really should be avoiding. The book also features quite a few live auction results. So you can actually see what models have sold for before you invest money in a specific model. This is great information to make sure that you don't pay over market when you're adding models to your collection. If you're seeking to sell models, of course, this information is great for determining what the real expectations could be when you sell your model. This information won't be found anywhere else. It's quite unique to my book, and I'm proud to say I put a lot of effort into compiling this. All the famous aircraft display model makers are included in my book. For example, you'll find good sections on Pac-Man. And of course, there's Nomoto, fabulous models from Japan, world famous, terrific stuff. And models, of course, from France. They produce great models in France and have a terrific history going back 50 years. This is just to name a few. There are many, many, many of the great model making companies featured in my book. And of course, I go over all the values of all their major models. And one of my favorite sections of the book features the collections of some of the biggest collectors in the world. These guys have been collecting for quite a number of years. They're famous in the hobby. And I have several of these collectors that have actually agreed to share uh, the beauty of their collections within the pages of the book. These are great pages. And you can go into these with a, a fine tooth comb, actually, looking at the details that some of these guys have. It's just fabulous stuff. One of the most important sections of the book actually is a very serious section. It's about safeguarding your collection. This particular chapter deals with everything you need to know to make sure that your models and your collection are protected and you and your heirs can rest assured that your models and the value that you have invested in this incredible collection that you've built up is safe and secure for yourself and future generations to come. This is important stuff. If the information that I've provided for you thus far in the video has been engaging, it's resonated with you, and you have found it fascinating, then I know for certain that this book is going to prove to be an invaluable resource in the coming months and years. Your collection is only going to get better. I know you're going to find the information valuable, and it's going to be something that you're going to check back to over and over again as you transact models in the future. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to expanding your collection as I expand my collection as we enjoy this hobby together. And I thank you for considering the purchase of my book for your library.